SDK components and uh, mobile platform components come first. Welcome, Martin. Thanks. Hi, uh, I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, so I'm Martin Lestagnol, uh, Engineering Director at Box. I manage the mobile engineering and another team called BoxNotes, which is kind of a light uh, Google Doc to take notes collaboratively. Uh, I don't have a clicker, so... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, no, no problem. Um, <clears throat> all right. So um, today, we'll discuss how we uh, transition our mobile strategy at Box from focusing primarily on end-user apps to a state where we are building for the platform first. And so we'll highlight the different uh, challenges and learnings we had along the way. So at Box, we are providing businesses with a way to share, manage, and access your content securely and from any device. And we are at the intersection of like two huge waves. The first one is that every businesses in the world are moving to the cloud. And the second one is that every businesses in the world are moving on mobile. So it's pretty uh, interesting challenges. And it's very exciting to think that we are actually transforming the way people uh, work and collaborate. We have more than 39 million users, uh, including 50,000 paying customers, and including 52% of the Fortune 500. Um, we, that's just a sample of our customers, but you can see that there's a pretty good variety with uh, um, oil and gas companies like Chevron, or global companies like IBM, General Electric, Toyota, GlaxoSmithKline, or the United Nations. So, <clears throat> Two years ago, uh, we decided to rebuild entirely our mobile experience from the ground up with a focus on user experience first. And it took us a year and a half to get there, but we are now like, pretty happy of the feedback we get from our customers. We believe that we have a, a pretty good uh, user uh, experience to access your content on the go. Now, as we were talking with our customers and we were going through uh, our customers' use case, we realized that we couldn't continue to add features within the, uh, in the app without cluttering the user interface. Basically, that's what we don't want to build. And um, <clears throat> so, so then the question is, how do we uh, solve our customer's use case without ending up like this? And we think the solution is to build like multiple apps. Now, <clears throat> there's many different apps we can build for our customers. And while we were talking with them, we, we've identified some common theme across the different industries. But there was also a lot of um, specific needs for each vertical. So how do we solve for those? Well, that's where the power of the platform is. We think the best way we can help our customers is actually by fostering a very active community of mobile developers. And so at Box, we are lucky to have um, more than a, a vibrant ecosystem of more than 50,000 uh, 50, um, third-party developers, making like each month more than 4.5 billion API calls. And uh, they've built more than 1,600 uh, apps leveraging Box in the different marketplaces. And so <clears throat> really, the role of the mobile team at Box is to increase the engagement on the whole ecosystem, not only in our own apps. Our mission is to make the user experience of Box amazing, whether you interact with Box in our own app or in a partner application. And so this shift from building a single mobile app to building an ecosystem of apps brings some very interesting challenges. For example, how do we expose our existing work in different apps? How do we maintain the quality as we scale? How do we ensure a good ownership of what we are building? And finally, what are the best tools we can provide to our developers? So <clears throat> the Box app can be seen as a sum of different components playing well with each other. And what we've done is we've extracted and released some of these components. Um, 
So, for example, we released the Bros and the Share UI SDK um, in April at our developer conference, BoxDev. And the Bros SDK allows you to drill down through a folder hierarchy, while the Share SDK provides you all the UI to do things like when you want to share a file, to do things like uh, setting the permission, looking, at, uh, looking through your uh, company directory to find the right person to collaborate it with, and so on. We've also developed um, a preview SDK that we released last month for iOS and that will be released in the next few weeks on, uh, on Android, and which allows you to render more than 100 file types. So the idea with all these SDKs is really to offer the best experience we can for any app that manages files in a way or another. And they can be leveraged not only for uh, box users, but also as a, a full um, backend for your storage via a product that we call Box Developer Edition. And so you can see how much uh, time we spent actually making all these previewers. Uh, you can see here a 3D uh, image. Um, we render things like PowerPoint, audio files, uh, uh, medical image, like source code, and so on. So now, I'd like to share with you a few learnings and challenges uh, that we had uh, along the way. And I'll try to illustrate those with some uh, uh, very simple examples. <clears throat> so the first one is about coupling. As I mentioned earlier, we, we, we've built different SDK, including a browse and a preview SDK. I'd like to talk a little bit more about those and the way they cache their information. So let's start with the Bros SDK. Um, <clears throat> so the Bros SDK allows you to navigate through a folder hierarchy. And to make the experience snappier, there's two different levels of caching. There is first, we are caching the folder content in a dedicated database. And we are also caching the thumbnail of each file that you are seeing so that uh, it can render uh, faster when you, when you look at a, at a folder. Now, on the preview SDK, <coughs> it's a little bit different. The preview SDK allows you to render more than 100 types of files. And now, in fact, what you see is often, uh, it's often not the file itself, but a preview representation of it. So, we leverage our conversion servers. And for example, when you preview this video, what you see is like a static thumbnail of this video, plus a preview representation of it that is adapted to the device size and the available bandwidth on the device. Now, when, what's interesting is between the bros and the preview SDK, in fact, uh, both use a thumbnail, and, and it, it's in fact the same asset. So there was some internal debate within the team as to whether we should have a common cache for these two components. And <clears throat> the thing is, if you do that, you tightly couple these components together. And what it means is we would, create a, it, it, we would have created a deep, um, implicit integration between those components, which makes it much harder to maintain. For example, who owns this part of the code that is used by both components? And when you're making a change in the preview SDK, how do you make sure it doesn't cause any issue in the Bros SDK? So that's, that's where, like, sometimes the duplication of code isn't the worst enemy. I know that as engineers, we, we hate duplicating code, but the factorization of code also comes with a cost that may be sometimes higher than the cost of duplication. And so <coughs> to develop these different SDKs, we try as much as we can to loosely couple our components. It forces explicit contracts between those components, and it makes it much easier. If you, make, if you want to make a change, for example, in the component C, you don't have to know everything about the component A and B. And this is especially important as you scale, if, for example, you start having separated teams working on different SDKs. So the second learning is about cohesion. <coughs> you can see that our, our um, box app is composed of multiple components. And one of them is called the job manager. The job manager role is to 
handle all the long running tasks. Like for example, when you copy files, move, upload, delete, or when you save for offline. And save for offline is a pretty advanced feature in the, in the Box app. Um, a little bit like, because it allows you not only to save uh, individual files, but also to save for offline a whole hierarchy of folder and subfolders. And so really what the job manager does is it's going to recursively list all the files and folders that you need to synchronize. And you need to think about all the edge cases, like for example, when you're backgrounding the app and resuming and, and when the, because it's a long running task, your folder hierarchy may change while you're synchronizing. So there's a lot of complexity here to deal with all these edge cases. And then the job manager will need to download all the assets that you need to preview the file while offline. And remember that these are not the file itself. In fact, um, for each file type, the job manager has to download some different assets. For example, we, we talked about the video uh, previously. The video needs a thumbnail and a preview representation of the video. The, a PowerPoint, for example, is going to be it's going to be uh, represented by a PDF. And <coughs> so the problem is the job manager, so, so the job manager has to cache the folders on the file, but it doesn't know anything about the assets that needs to be downloaded so that the preview SDK can render it. And also it doesn't know where to save these assets so that the preview SDK can find them and use them while offline. So how do we do, how do we solve that? There's multiple approach and the first obvious uh, solution is like to think like, okay, let's expose some endpoints in the preview SDK to help the job manager. So when the job manager wants to save a file for offline, he's going to ask to the preview SDK, hey, can you tell me what assets do you need to render this file offline? And then tell me where to store this file so that like you can find them back. But the problem is if you do that, you make the interface of the preview SDK much more complex and you don't want to, you want to keep a slim, very understandable um, interface. So <coughs> a second approach could be to push all the logic of the job manager in the preview SDK. So you ask the preview SDK, hey, can you cache this folder or can you cache this file? And the preview SDK handle everything. But the preview SDK's job is to render files. And so it should not have to manage things like offlining folders and, and things like dealing with long running tasks and resuming from the background and, and things like this. So if you do this approach, you end up with a previous decay that is not cohesive. It says like it's supposed to be about files, but it managed also in some way some folders and it's, it's also makes, it also makes it mu much more complicated. So Instead, um, what we want is like to keep the, the, the complexity of the folder synchronization in the job manager, but ask the preview SDK to handle everything related to the file. And so if you do that, you have a simple interface and you have cohesive SDK, which is a very, very important uh, thing to do when you have like multiple SDKs. It, like, if you, um, sorry, oops, sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong button. Yeah, usually the more complex an interface is, the more prone to bug it is. And I mean, if you look at these two illustrations, think about it. What is the most prone to bug interface between those two? The third learning is about uh, convention over configuration. So, when you start an SDK, you, you always start with full of good intentions. You think it's going to be the most simple SDK to use and everything. And so let's take, for example, this simple donut request as we can find it in many um, SDKs. So you start simple. You, you start by thinking, OK, what do I need to download a file? I need a file ID. But then as you start using your SDK, you realize that you may need some more advanced option, like for example, a local pass or a version ID or and so on. Now the problem is when you add these parameters, you make the experience much more complex for the first time user. Because 
here you're directly exposed to all the complexity the whole complexity of the of the SDK and you ask your user to know about all of these parameters right up front. So for the box SDKs we took a, a slightly different approach where it's still uh, you can still perform a basic download request but if you want to reconfigure specific aspects you can by chaining options. And this pattern allows you to create like some very complex requests while keeping it simple for the first time user. For example, if you want to create a shared link, you can still do it in one line, but if you want to rec reconfigure all the aspects of it, you can. And that, so we, we've done that for Android and for iOS. And this may look like very, very simple and trivial like when you, when you look at it, but in fact, it's, it took us a lot of internal debate and um, there was engineers who really believe, who took the position that we should be explicit about everything we're doing and we should not make decisions for the developer. But what we found out is we can find convention that worked very well for most of the users and then the more, most advanced user can still uh, reconfigure it. So it's one of these cases where Simplicity is not simple, and it, it looks simple now, but it, it, it took us a lot of energy and three different versions of the SDK to actually come to this uh, architecture. And <clears throat> so the last thing I wanted to talk about is the importance of dog fooling your SDKs. Um, we, we used to have an SDK for internal use and an SDK for the platform. And what happened is the SDK for the platform, nobody was using it internally. And it's very important if you're serious about uh, being a mobile platform to be customers of your own SDKs. You can't, you can't pretend to be a platform and not play by the rule of the platform. So really, um, redeveloping an SDK for both the internal and third-party developers helped us reduce tremendously the, the complexity of the first-time experience for the users and just like, we feel much more owner of it because everybody uses SDK every day. So that's the last thing I wanted to tell you today. Uh, thank you very much. And I think for the question, it's after on side. <laughs> thanks. Cool. Thanks, Martin.